sir. Thanks so much for calling me back. Yeah. Um, right. Right. Well, the thing I know, I'm worried about the kids too, but, um, but M Mr. Kringle, it's been two shelves. Right. I broke two shelves. I, 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 I going to, I am cutting back the candy. Yeah. Um, but it's just been a really rough year. I know that's why it's really important, but, um, maybe just this year we can make it out on the couch. So we're doing a holiday special. What does that mean? It means cookies, it means crunches, and it means crinkles. So we're gonna make a ton of cookies because I think when you can give a little love with a cookie, people will love you for forever. So I love to bake cookies for friends, for neighbors, for strangers, and sometimes they're like, why are you giving me all these cookies? And I'm like, because I bake too many and if I keep them in my house, I'm gonna eat them all. But we're gonna make a bunch. And in between, we're gonna do a little, some crunches. I have this friend, Sean Hollenbach, who is an amazing talent. He's a hilarious comedian. He's had a long running show over 10 years called Classic Cases in New York City, and an award-winning podcast, and a show through Lifetime called In Between Floors, and on Netflix and Amazon. <clears throat> and he's amazing. And so when the pandemic started, he said, hey, I can't go to the gym, he's in New York City, and he said, does anyone want to work out a few days a week on Zoom? So I was like, Yes, because I was just baking bread and eating it all the time. And I was like, I'm never going to be able to wear pants with buttons again. So we did. So three days a week, we do workout classes. There's a bunch of different comedians and friends. And now it's turned into comedians, friends, their siblings from all over the country who work out on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I've been in and out as far as working out. They're in great shape. I'm not so much. But we have a lot of fun. And so he's going to work out with us a little. Hey everyone, welcome to the class this morning. Today we're doing Weihnachten Workout. We're going to do lots of different uh, Christmassy, uh, holiday style uh, exercises with shoulders and abs. Is everyone ready? Yeah! Hello! All right, in the spirit of Twas the Night Before Christmas, we're going to be doing our shoulder reindeer flies. Like here we go. From down this position, up, and here we go. So if you, do, if you don't have weights at home, what would you recommend people use? Ah, here we go. All right. Um, if you don't have weights at home, I recommend using cans of soup, wine bottles. You can also use books or uh, just even do your own tension. You can just tense your arms and work against your own tension going up and down. Okay. All right. And if, I would say use mulled wine. <laughs> There's a lot of empty bottles out there right now. Cranberry <laughs> <laughs> sauce you didn't use for Thanksgiving. All right, here we go. Ready? And on Dasher, <laughs> on Dancer, on Prancer, and Vixen. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen and three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. All right, there's nine, right? Eight. Eight. Oh, eight tiny reindeer? Is that what the Rudolph. And here we go, one for Rudolph. Okay. <laughs> there we go. All right, our, our next set is going to be uh, we're going to 12 spiced cider shoulder presses where you have your arms like this. You're going above your head and back down. Again, you can use wine bottles, cans of soup, uh, cranberry sauce cans, whatever, or your own body tension. 
And then after that, we're gonna do two crunches exercises I'll talk to you about in a minute. So, all right, here we go with our spiced cider shoulder presses and weights up and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right. Our next exercise, you're going to see my festive socks. <laughs> Very festive. So this is our 30 dreidel Russian twists. We're going to balance up here and you're going to twist working on your obliques. Are we ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, ten, nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right. Now we're gonna do our bicycle cringle crunches. Thirty. Lay flat on your back. Hands behind your head, and you're gonna bring your knee to your shoulder, or knee to your elbow. <laughs> That'd be difficult. Here we go. Ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And release. <laughs> Got a sip of eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> Pour it all over the top of your head, it'll be so refreshing. Okay. Our next set is up on the housetop, shoulder raises. We go up to the housetop and back down. Up to the housetop and back down. 12. And then we're going to do 40 cut the wrapping paper scissors. So this, this, this <laughs> off the ground. OK. We're going to do our up on the housetop, shoulder raises. Again, you're using weights. You're using uh, cans of soup wine or just your body tension and we're going for 12. Are we ready? Yes. Ready. Okay, here we go. Ready? And drummers drumming. <laughs> Pipers piping. <laughs> Lords are leaping. Ladies dancing. Maids are milking. Swans are swimming. Geese are lighting. Golden rings. Calling birds, French hens, <laughs> turtle doves, and, uh, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to be doing our 40 scissors, cutting the wrapping paper with our feet. All right, so I'll demonstrate over here. So you're laying flat on your back, hands to the side in a crunch position. Your legs are six inches off the ground and you're gonna be doing this for 40. Are you ready? As I'll ever be. Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, How are we doing, everybody? Great. Good. Very fun. <laughs> Get a sip of water. Jen, your tree's beautiful. 
going to be Prancer, Plank Ups, Wiseman, Prayer Pushes, <laughs> and Solstice Slow Crunches. Oh, so for our Prancer, Plank Ups, what you're going to do is you're going to be in a plank position. You're going to collapse your back and then push out with your shoulders. Okay, we're going to do 20 of those. Are you ready? Here we go. Ho, ho, ho. And one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. All right. Next, we're doing our Wiseman prayer pushes. So, what you're going to do, you're going to put your hands in a prayer position, you're going to push against your own hand. You're gonna bring it up, way up over your head. These need to come off. Over your head, back behind your head, and go back so you feel it in your shoulder. Okay. The wise one prayer push, here we go. I'm only doing 12 of these. Ready? One. Two. Three. Read the north. See the north star in your third eye focus. <laughs> Four. <laughs> Five. Six. Feel the myrrh. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, that makes a lot of frankincense. Yeah. <laughs> Golden. Nine. If you're really unhappy with this class, you can speak to the manger. Carry <laughs> 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 it on, carry it on. Twelve. Okay. Now we're gonna do our solstice crunches. Slow solstice. So what you're gonna be working your upper abs. Um, legs are up like this. You are going to, again, slow solstice crunches. So you're going to work your upper abs. So you're going to start here, go up, slowly roll back down. Before you touch, you're going to go up again to do another crunch. Make sure that your abs are engaged the entire time. The solstice may be the darkest uh, day of the year, but you all bring me a lot of light. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, here we go. Again, keep your abs engaged the entire time and breathe. Ready? One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, and 20, and release. Boy, what day is it? It's Christmas Day. We're done. <laughs> All right. Let's do a little stretching here. Um, Put your arm across your chest, hold. Stretch out the back of the shoulder. And 
release and switch. All right. Now bring your arm above your head. Pull. Cool. Like this is your album cover, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday album. Like a little saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> and here you go, switch. Sounds like it's they're playing Amazing Grace. It's supposed to be at Christmas. All right, and now clasp your hands a little above your head. Santa brings you something great this year. Hope 2021 would be a good start. Yeah. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas to Merry you all. Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. May your days be merry and bright. Yeah. So that was our exercises. Thanks, Sean. Now we're on to baking some cookies. Okay. But today we're gonna make biscotti. What? What's biscotti, you ask? What's biscotti, you ask? Of course you know what biscotti is, but if you don't know, it actually is from the word biscottis, which means twice baked. So it is, it's an Italian cookie. It's, some people think it's a little dry, but it's intentionally dry so you can dunk it in coffee. It's delicious. Um, we're gonna make a holiday biscotti with dry cranberries, like chocolate chips, but you can make it a million ways. You can add nuts, you can add nothing, you can add some almond extract, you can flavor it however you want. We're gonna do that. We're going to make a basic butter cookie recipe, which I'm gonna show you how to make it into three different cookies because why not? I mean, why? I say, you know, if you can multitask, multi-cookie and multi-have fun, so here we go. So we're gonna make some biscotti. The first thing you need, it's very easy. So we're gonna double this recipe actually. So I'm doing two sticks of butter or a half a pound of butter or a cup of butter, however you want to say it. We're going to add two sticks room temperature butter. So this KitchenAid mixer, I have made a million cookies, but this KitchenAid mixer my mom bought me like two or three decades ago. She has since passed away, which is very sad, of course. Um, but I love this mixer and it forever works knock on wood and it makes me think of my mom every time I use it and when I was in kind of in a confused state in my life I had left school and I didn't know what I wanted to do and I was going to open another business but I didn't even know that yet I just started baking cookies because it made me happy and so I probably baked like a thousand cookies I was like in my early 20s my mom just kept buying me ingredients because she thinks she didn't know what to do with me and well, she bought me a mixer, and here we are. Years later, I became a chef for like 18 years, so maybe she knew something about that. Okay, so I have my butter. I'm gonna add one and a half cups of sugar. I'm going to add to this my eggs. So I'm gonna add four eggs. That's me throwing eggs. And then I'm just gonna turn this on. Bit of 
salt to this. So I have my butter, my eggs, my sugar, a little bit of salt, like a pinch. And then we're gonna to add to this some baking powder. I'm going to add one tablespoon of baking powder. And then I'm going to add to this some orange zest. I like a little zest in baking because it's got a lot of flavor and sometimes it just marries everything together. Like you'll have the sweetness of the cranberry and the white chocolate and then you'll have the a little bit drier cookie and it just adds another flavor. So the zest is just the, the colored part of the orange. See the white part's the pith, so you don't want that because that gets bitter. Just gonna get some orange zest. I tend to make strange faces while I cook, and I'm trying hard not to do that. I've been told I look like I'm crazy and scary and all of that. That could be true, but really, I'm unaware I'm doing it. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla to this. Vanilla extract. Now, if you don't have a microplaner like this, it doesn't matter, just use a grater, the finest thing on your grater. And if you don't have a grater, just use the peeler. Peel a little of it off, chop it up of your zest. To this, we're going to add, I'm looking at my ingredients here, my recipe, because I didn't write this recipe, but we're gonna add four cups of flour to this. So that's one and a half. pretty dry mixture. Not crumbly dry. I'll let that go a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a half a cup of white chocolate chips and a half a cup of fried cranberries. Throw those out. There you go. Easy peasy. I preheated my oven to 350. Now here's the thing. Not biscotti. The next step, you go, oh, this is, this is easy. I'm cleaning this off. I'm going to take my dough. I have my pan with my parchment paper. Take my dough and I divide it in half. So this is not a cookie that spreads a lot. So I want to be aware of that. I'm going to make it two long logs and then I'm going to bake it for about 15 minutes and then I'm going to let it cool and then I'm going to slice it up and then I'm going to bake it again. Therein lies the twice baked. Okay. So I'm going to divide my dough up, eyeball this. And then I'm going to literally make two logs. Biscotti dough all over everything. Put this in the oven and then I'm gonna get started on my next cookie. So the next one is the basic cookie. It's the basic butter cookie, which we're gonna turn this 
basic recipe into three different kinds of cookies, which is my favorite thing to do. Because why not? You know, you ever see those people and they have like 300 kinds of cookies and like, how many kinds of cookies? Well, this will help you because you could actually use this recipe and probably make 10 or 20 different kinds of cookies. So what we're going to do, basic butter cookie, my mom's recipe, super easy. We're going to double it so you can use half of it if you want to. It's generally two sticks butter, two cups flour, three quarters of a cup sugar, and one egg. I'm doubling it, so I'm doing a pound of butter at room temperature. I'm doing two eggs. I'm doing one and a half cups of sugar. One and a half cup sugar. So I'm gonna give this a start. Just to like get going. Probably should have cut that butter up a little bit. So I'm gonna do it now. This is me being glamorous. Oh. Like, how could that be? Yes, this is what professionals look like in real life. Oh my God, I have so many funny, crazy baking stories. I would do insane orders because I would always say yes to things. And I'm like, oh, of course, no problem. And then I would be like making food for like 13,000 people. Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I'll figure this out, it's just math. All right, so we got our butter going. We're gonna add our flour. So I'm not gonna show you how to do these cookie cutter ones because they're really easy. You just are gonna make your dough, roll it out, use the cookie cutter. I could show you how to make the royal icing and then decorate them. But we're gonna do these a few different other ways. So we have our butter, our sugar, and our egg cream together. going to add four cups of flour to this. Ooh. Cookies just make things better. Just, I'm not a person who can eat just two cookies. I'm married to someone who could eat just two cookies. So they um, hide the cookies from me and find them months later. I asked them to hide them, but because I know me. But I love to give cookies to neighbors and to family and I ship them and I, all those things. I just think it makes people happy. And why not? Right now, come on, make people happy. Who cares? Eat four. So we have our basic recipe. It's going to be ready in a minute. It comes together very quickly. And it's very workable dough. It's not super sticky. I would say you still have to dust your cookie cutters with flour regardless. However, you're gonna be able to work with it. All right. I'm gonna cut some out for some jam filled cookies too. So I'm gonna do some sandwich cookies. Maybe I'll fill some with chocolate and raspberry too. Mm -hmm. I have a lime baking sheet. This is the magic of walking around. Okay, I'm gonna use this cute little flowery shape. This first one we're gonna do a sandwich cookie. I'm gonna take out about a third of the dough. And since I'm doing a sandwich, I'm gonna do obviously an even number of cookies so I can end up with a sandwich. Unless of course I just wanna eat one. It could happen, I don't like Blame it on the dog. <laughs> Roll it out. Now since it's gonna be a sandwich, 
I don't want it to be extremely thick just because you're gonna have two cookies in a filling, right? You don't wanna be eating like a brick, but. We're gonna dip our cookie cutter in some flour. Now that I say it's not sticky, it'll be sticky. This lot is how life goes. Here, okay. So, I lied to you. It's sticky for a second. All things uh, affect baking, right? Your humidity in your room, how warm it is, how warm your butter. Sometimes if your dough is too soft, you're gonna wanna chill it because if your dough is too soft, then what happens is your butter will actually make your cookie spread faster because it'll melt at a faster rate. But I just add a little flour. I think we're going to be okay. All right. been kind of ridiculous right for everyone I would say I think for the hardest for me is not knowing um, the next thing and also messing up that cookie it was okay it's, don't be sick uh, but I find that if you tell people how you feel they can meet you in the middle of that and be like, yeah, I get that. I'm feeling the same way. And then you're like, oh yeah, cool. It's good to know. If you hear someone, all right, I'm gonna roll it out. I'm just gonna do, well, I'm gonna do as many as this makes. Because I want a nice assortment, but I don't wanna have to make million of each one though I will probably eventually this holiday season because I want to so baking your best tool that you have to know if something's done is your nose. So once you start smelling, it smells good. About a minute later, usually it's done. About five minutes later, usually it's burnt. So just tr trust your senses and uh, do that. see the filling. Someone sent me a beautiful box of chocolates the other day, but it didn't have one of those keys in it. I don't you know what kind it is. And I'm like, this is beautiful. But I'm going to smush a hole in the bottom of each one to find out what they are, because I don't want the pink nougat one. <laughs> pink soft nougat, what is it? I don't know. I'm not a big marshmallow fan either. So I just kind of squish it, and then I put it back in the thing. That's wrong to do. I don't share it with straight. Okay. All right. So we're going to put these in the oven. Scotty's going. Okay. So next up, I'm going to take here's the remainder of our dough. I'm going to divvy it in half. And I'm going to do, let's do some white chocolate chip coconut. Oh, it sounds fun. It's like a mouse bar, but it's not. Here we go. We have our cookie sheet. I'm going to add to this some cocoa powder. So I love a 
unsweetened cocoa powder because I think it's versatile. You're not committed to the sweetness of a sweetened chocolate. Those are two cats fighting over it. Uh, no. So we're going to next make some chocolate white chip coconut cookies. So to this, like a third of the batter that we just did, I'm going to add two heaping tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm also going to add to this about a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm gonna sweeten it a little because we have the unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm gonna add about a quarter of a cup more of sugar. I want kind of like a sweet coconutty cookie. I'm going to add so I'm going to start with about two heaping tablespoons of coconut. And I'm going to add I realize I'm not measuring very well. That's true. It's true. I'm not. I'm going to add about a half a cup of white chocolate chip. this is just our basic recipe we started with and to that to our butter flour sugar egg we added cocoa powder unsweetened cocoa powder we added a little bit more sugar we added some cocoa coconut flakes and white chocolate chips so I'm just gonna make these into little balls And then I'm going to roll them in some coconut. Because isn't it fun when you get to open a cookie box that somebody made and it's not just one thing and you're like, oh, what's this one? What's this one? I don't know what's this one. I like that. So I tend to be the person who likes to decorate early. I know, you hate me. It's true. I, this year we decorated very early. We're like, it doesn't matter. No one's coming over. So November 1st, we were fully decorated. So it's kind of like Santa's Village of Crazy in my house. You just, that's my dog who agrees to that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna take, I'm just gonna take our coconut flakes. Just gonna roll them in it. These are gonna spread out. Because remember, there's no leavening in these, so they will spread. They're not gonna spread out dramatically, but they will spread a bit. Okay. So, we're so close. These will be on deck.
love that when you like need so many napkins and you pick out the exact amount you need and I'm always like, great, man, I did it. That's an older reference to people who know the movie Rain Man. Okay. So I'm gonna clean up a little. All right, so we're doing our sandwich cookies and I mix powdered sugar with a little bit of like a teaspoon of cornstarch. Mix that up and that'll keep our powdered sugar staying on there. Just tossing our sandwich cookies in there. So they look festive and fun. So our biscotti is cooled. And I'm gonna slice it up. And I'm gonna throw it back in the oven for another 12 to 14 minutes. So it kind of browns a little. On each side. I'm going to take each one off. It's just a little, it's pretty solid. And then there's the end piece. It's like the end piece of bread. Some people love the end piece, some people don't. You're gonna slice them up and then you put them on the pan, laying flat. And then they're gonna do the second bake part of the twice bake. Right, so this is like the perfect dunking size. my dog Josie. She's like, I like the end piece. She likes the end, the beginning, and the middle piece. But not gonna do it. Turn them on their side. in the oven, bake them for about 12 more minutes, and then we'll be perfect. Here are our chocolate coconuts. Came out and look yummy. Ah! I want to spread a little cookie loaf. Yay! Which is exactly what it sounds like. Show. Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, all of the things, happy, happy solstice, happy there's a sky and a ground, happy there's snow, happy there's not snow, happy there's sometimes things, happy we make cookies, happy we have butter in the world, it's better. and uh, happy for you. So thank you for watching. We want you to have a great new year. 
and a wonderful holiday season. And we're grateful for our health and for love and for family. All right, enjoy. Do a little more exercises. The snow angel. about doing these is it feels relaxing. The scary part is thinking you can't get up. Bye.